You think you have control of your life, but you don't really have control of your life. And the devil's just like, he's really pulling the strings, you know what I mean? Because you can't serve two masters, you serve serving one another. The stove exploded and it opened up. My buddy Dale, who's still right there to this day, he was like, start grabbing stuff. And, and I remember like here inside just saying, I release everything, you know? When you got the demonic behind it and you don't really know how to battle, she knew how to battle him, but I didn't battle with him. I was real passive. I could fight you if I could see you, but if I can't see you, I would just like let you run your course in my head. I'm going to the Dream Center because I, I still go through things and I, sometimes I feel like there's something that's holding my heart and I can't give it all to God. I don't care what God wants me to do as long as I'm in His will. If it's washing toilets at Dream Center for whatever it is, as long as I'm in His will and His perfect will, everything is cool. Junior, can you share with us what was your childhood like? Well, my childhood was, uh, it was, it was okay as far as, well, I used to think it was okay. It was, it was hectic because I was a bad kid, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, I was always getting into stuff, you know, and my dad was uh, real strict. He was, I had a loving dad, but he didn't, you know, he, he didn't spare the rod, you know what I mean? So I was abused, you know, for a few years. I don't know, maybe about seven, eight years till I took off in 78 when I was 13. You know, I started smoking weed at 12, and I used to get it from my dad, and he used to beat me, but he always kept it in the same spot, so I always took it, you know. And I, uh, my mom, I'm half black and half Mexican, you know. My mom, she, uh, she was a good woman, you know. She, she always just went to work. She would cook and, and you know, do it, do it, I guess, most mothers did back in that era, you know. You know I was born in 64. Um, and my dad, you know, he worked, you know, he was a good provider, you know what I mean? He made sure I did my homework. He taught us how to be clean, taught us manners. But like I said, you know what I mean? He would, he would really put the punishment down, you know. So that's what made me I mean, I was, I don't, I mean, I was a bad, like I said, I don't, I can't, my, my dad didn't make me make the mistakes. I, I chose to make them, you know, I was always disobedient, selfish or whatever. But coming from that, coming from that type of lifestyle, I couldn't wait to grow up because I knew when I would, when I got grow up, I was going to be able to defend myself. I was going to be able to fight for myself. So that just instilled a, just such a drive in me, you know what I mean? So when I hit the streets, you know what I mean? It was just me now. I became an adult at 12, uh, 13 years old, you know what I mean? I was taking care of myself, you know what I mean? I was doing for me, you know? And it just led to a life of, of life of, uh, you know, me doing me, you know what I mean? On my terms, you know? I always believed in God because my grandma, my black grandma, Every time I went to her house, it was always gospel music, you know. And uh, and then, like I was telling you earlier, in L.A., you always hear the street evangelists and this and that. And then, like, my parents would take me places sometimes to be, like, my mom would take me to Father Tom in my neighborhood to try to get me leveled out or whatever, you know. And then, like, I started doing jail time at our, in my teenage years. And then you have the testimony books and uh, Nikki Cruz run, Baby Run, Phil Thatcher, all them different evangelists, you know, and I used to always read stuff. So I got exposed to, I don't know, I just, I just always knew that there was a guy, but I wasn't serving God, you know what I mean? I was serving myself. But in the same token, when gangbanging and stuff started, I didn't want to gangbang because I thought about why would I want to kill a kid? It would just, you know what I mean? It would affect his family. I always had a heart, and I don't know why, but I just knew I always had a, always had a heart for people, but I, but it's, it's kind of, 
it's kind of like a contradiction when you say you like you always had a heart, but yet you always lived a, a, a ugly life. You know what I mean? Where where you steal, you 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 sell drugs to people and this and that. But it's like until you like surrender to God. You don't really, you think you have control of your life, but you don't really have control of your life. And the devil's just like, he's really pulling the strings, you know what I mean? Because you can't serve two masters, you're serving one or the other. And so all that time I was just serving the devil, you know what I mean? And I, uh, I served him for a long time, you know. How long? Well, I, I was running with the devil until I was 29. And that's when I got saved. That's when I got rat. That's when I really got an encounter with God. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I've said the center prayers when I was a kid. That's when I really said it. I was in Corcoran here in level four prison. It was my fifth time in prison here. And it was just amazing. I read that scripture that says, study to show thyself for proving the God of work and the need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And when I read it, it just was like, wow, all I got to do is study. God's going to prove me and he's going to use me. You know what I mean? And it was like, you know, I read that a bunch. I could just sit here and I could quote scriptures to you for a while because I know a lot of them. But it was like, I just ran with it. But like I was telling you in prison, it's easy because it was easy for me because I didn't, there was no women around. There was no drugs around. There was nothing around. But God used me, you know what I mean? It's like he took me to the mountaintop, and I just had a heart for people. And it was like, I knew you didn't have to sin, you know what I mean? I would go like months without sinning. And, you know, I would you know, I would backslide, someone would get molly, and I would just let my pride would get to me, and I would touch him up, you know what I'm saying? Because always, I've always been a fighter. But then, like, I would be hurt, and I would go out to the yard, and I would cry with the person, apologize, whatever. But anyways... I got out of prison and I just forsook the Lord. I went looking for Gloria, an ex-girlfriend of mine. I didn't find her. I didn't find her, but I found her friend and I found heroin. And then, bam, I was back on my own thing. And I went to prison four more times. Well, when I got out of prison in 94 here, they came out the three strikes. So I was on Skid Row. Well, actually, I wasn't on Skid Row. I started teaching at Associated Technical College. And I became, I became a plumbing instructor at the college, but I started using meth, started using heroin, and I met this girl, and we went through our thing or whatever, and we broke up, and she went out to Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, I was sitting in an apartment, and she got us here, and I was like, man, what am I going to do? And she called me up and was like, come out here, maybe we can make it. And I was just like, I thought, okay, cool, I can escape L.A. So I went out there, and when I went out there, it was like, it was like L.A. 20 years back, you know. But then before you know it, I was into the same old thing, you know, drugs, you know, women, perversions. And I went to prison four more times. And then I uh, got out of prison. My last time there was in 2019. But prior, in 2015, prior to going to prison, my last time there, 2015 is when I, or 2014, I ran back home. You know what I mean? Because I was wanted. And I bought this Indian girl back with me. Me and Lori seen her this this weekend on Skid Row. You know what I mean? She's still on Skid Row to this day. And uh, we broke up the same night we got here, you know, and the, the devil's just hijacked her brain. She's still out there. Her name's Miranda. Well, anyways, in 14, that's when I met Lori. And, uh, you know, we we were, you know, I was just another relationship, whatever. And, uh, and then like like she told you, we broke up, and um, I ended up doing my thing, and then I got extradited and went back to Oklahoma. Well, I got out in 2019 from prison, and then I came back, and I was on Skid Row. I was staying at Union Rescue Mission, and I was in there for eight months, and I got kicked out because I started using heroin. And then I was right there on 6th Street in between Crocker and town on Skid Row for about almost a year and a half. And Lori, Lori, I seen her in 2021, that April, remember she told you, and we just saw her or whatever, and then she went on. And I didn't see her till about six months later. Well, about a week before, prior to seeing her, my tenant burned down. Hmm. And, you know, I'd always come from the shower, and I would, there was churches open. It was that Sunday night, and I, I took a, gave him $100. 
because, you know, I had money and it was like, I knew my life wasn't about nothing, you know what I mean? Because I wasn't about nothing. So I would always just, you know, when I had money, take it and give it. Because at least you know it's being good for something. But it was like, God was like, God God didn't care about that. It was just like, I mean, my tent burned down, but I believe, I believe God has something to do with it. Because like, when the fire happened, I didn't think about grabbing my money. I had $2,800 in the tent. You know, I didn't think about grabbing my money. And when, when it, the, the stove exploded and it opened up. My buddy Dale, who's still right there to this day, he was like, start grabbing stuff. And, and I remember like here inside just saying, I release everything, you know? And I don't know if it was my voice or, or just like, you know, God just telling me, just release everything. And uh, because later on, me and Laura went to somebody and they prophesied, us, prophesied over us. And the guy was said, God just wants you to release everything. You know what I mean? And it was like, that that is it's that's easier said than done you know and it's like um now since you know i came back i i uh after the fire and then i ran into glory and you know we started this process all over again it's just been like it's just been a working process you know what i mean and i couldn't have did it without her you know what i mean and i know it's and i know it's all by god's doing but like it was like I needed someone that I could physically see to help me because it was like, it was, it, I mean, she wrote all down, but it's just like, it was just a battle this whole last year, you know? Uh, sometimes we wouldn't even talk on the phone. We would just email, you know what I mean? Because we couldn't really talk because Leviathan was in there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we would always get to arguing. When you got the demonic behind it and you don't really know how to battle, she knew how to battle him, but I didn't battle with him. I was real passive. Mm -hmm. I could fight you if I could see you, but if I can't see you, I would just like let you run your course mm -hmm. in my head. And I would just be sitting there like, what am I going through this and that? And you're just sitting there getting smacked around. And I would always, you know, if me and her talk, because I could physically talk to her, I might be going through something and I'm going to lash out at her. You know what I mean? So we would just email and I was just, it was just crazy. to just, And I just had to... It was it was just, it was an experience, you know. But like like to where I'm at today, is like I'm going to the Dream Center because I I still go through things, and I sometimes I feel like there's something that's holding my heart, and I can't give it all to God because I I remember how I remember how it was when I first got saved. You know what I mean? And it's to where you just how do you say um that was un you just you abandon all yourself to him mm -hmm. you know like when i see you in the restaurant and you and you're sharing i can just see a person is just all for god nothing else and that's what i want to be you know what i mean because apart from that apart from because i should want to give him my all you know what i mean and and when you can't for some reason and like like with her you know what i mean i put her through things and I don't want to put her through things, but for some reason, I keep slipping. And it's, I don't know whether it's demonic or I have an altar or if it's just my flesh. But I know my book doesn't say that there's an excuse to sin. There's an excuse to be angry. There's, you know what I mean? In the Bible, there's no excuses for being weak or none of that stuff. You know what I mean? And, and I know, like Lori always tells me, you're just trying too hard mm -hmm. or this and that. And it's like, I don't I don't know what it is, but I just know that I I don't I don't use heroin no more. I don't I don't smoke weed no more. I don't smoke cigarettes no more. I don't look at women and lust after them no more. You know what I mean? I don't want to be with a woman until God sees that it, I'm I'm fit. You know what I mean? To work, you know what I mean? Like if me and Laura, when we do get married, you know what I mean? If I'm fit and I can handle it, because you know when you live the life I've lived. You're with someone and you have all the different stuff that flows through your mind because of the soul ties you've had with we're so intricately made, you know what I mean? And if you don't if you're not standing on that firm foundation and you don't have his peace and his everything and you're not about everything, you're just it's just like you're just gonna be tossed like a wave, you know what I mean? And and you just you never know what you're gonna be subject to. You're going to be at the devil's mercy. You know what I mean? You're going to be at the mercy of your flesh, which is deceitfully wicked, unless you learn to subdue it 
and exercise it where that transformation truly takes place and then you can walk in total freedom, you know what I mean, total victory. It says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, but it won't set you free if you don't apply it. You know what I mean? When Paul says, you know what I mean, to present your body living in high, that's the action. If you don't present it, he can't do nothing with it. You know what I mean? You can talk about it, but if you're not, if you're not about it and you don't walk it out, it's just, it's just not going to happen. That's where, that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at right now in my life, you know. You know, it's so amazing that you're, you are so honest and truthful and the Lord knows your heart and that he is so patient with you because he knows you. He already have this amazing plan for you, brother. So it's, it's just so, it's such a blessing to hear you being very honest and God knows that. And God knows that. But what's so interesting is that you recognize that you have certain weaknesses and that because of your upbringing or because of generational curse, we don't know. God knows. Um, if you don't mind, share the, the journey how when you said that you grew up with a pretty strict father and uh, did, I assume I would say that you didn't have a good relationship with your dad. Right. And that's why you said you couldn't wait until when you reach a certain age and you would be on your own, which you were very independent at the age of 13 then, because that's when you, you couldn't uh, wait to be to have that freedom. Um, if you don't mind share the, the journey of, you know, being 13 years old, independent and what kind of things that you had to do in order to survive. You mentioned about selling drugs. But what other things? I mean, 13 is such a young age to do adult things. Yeah. You know, um, but it's sad to see. Now you see a 13-year-old kid on the street. I'm sure you, your heart was very broken to see that because they're so young. Yeah. You know, they, they lost their childhood. They don't have that childhood um, life. And so I'm sure that's what happened to you. You've been through a lot. You went through a lot. Um, and then when you met Lori, your future wife, uh, my next question is, do you know that she's the one for you, that God confirms, give you signs and confirmation that Lori is the wife that God chose for you, that picked out for you? Well, um, well, when I, leaving, leaving what I did at 13 and living on the streets, you know, it's just, you just learn to survive. You learn to adapt. You know, you got to be, you got to be, you got to be cunning. You got to watch your back. You know what I mean? You got to be tough, you know? And, and that's, that's, that's how I learned how to be. And then like, you can be, when you, you can become real prideful. You can become real vain. You know, those, those are a lot of, those are things that I still, I don't necessarily struggle with them, but I see them trying to, trying to rise up within me, you know, like I'm getting ready to see my little brother tomorrow, you know, and, you know, he's like my little homeboy, you know what I mean? And he, he likes, you know, my, I got homeboys that are doing prison life right now and they talk and they talk about me and stuff. And when he talks about certain things, I can see that, you know, but I don't want to talk about those things no more. I don't want to talk about how the old man was, you know what I mean? Because the old man wasn't about nothing, you know what I mean? In the world's eyes, you may think you were about something, but if I wasn't, where's my, my car, my house, my children, where it be, you know what I mean? Anyways, and, and like with Lori, it's like, I mean, I, 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 I see the things that we've went through the last year, you know what I mean? And the things that God has told her, and, and I believe in them wholeheartedly. And, you know, I, I, I still, whatever it is, it drives me to get in those funks and I lash out at her. And I say certain things because I haven't, because I haven't verbally heard or felt it in my spirit. And, but... But I've prayed that this Christmas, because Christmas is my birthday, that I ask God to, to speak to me in my spirit, that the Lord is one. And it's like, even when I say that, I mean, I don't know if like just, just having the premonition, because like even when I say that, it's like, really? 
Because I feel like inside of me, it's like, really, you got to have God say that? You don't, you don't believe it? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Why, why would he uh, have her go through this with me, what she's went through, you know what I'm saying? And, and the stuff that she's went through. And then, and then like I said, just, just, so many, just so many different things, you know what I mean? And it's like, but then on the flip side, you got it to where the enemy or whatever it is can whisper in your ear, but yeah, but still, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, you know? And, and it's like, but that's what I pray to God because, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, I haven't heard, I have, like I said, I haven't heard or I don't know, I don't know how you do it or whatever, how it happens, but it's like, God knows I want her to be the I want her to be the one. I hope she's the one, you know what I mean? And it's like, but yeah, but it's like Yeah, I get I get in I get in I get that whatever I like I said, I don't know I don't know what makes me because even like every morning it's like every morning it's like I wake up and I'm like I'm like on guard, like, man, mm. you know what I mean? How's it going to be? You know what I mean? You know, when, when she turns us on, how am I going to react this and that? And I think it's just a matter of that I'm not totally surrendered. You know what I mean? That's just it. I'm not totally surrendered or whatever. Because like when me and her, we get up and we praise God and this and that, it's awesome. You know what I mean? And it's like, but... The, the devil is just relentless and just like, you know, I've, I've, we listen to so much stuff on TV and, and I feel it and I hear it and I can receive it. But like, it's like when Isaiah was like, well, some deliverance is harder for other people because like there's such a bigger calling on their lives. And like when I speak that, it's like, I, it's so tricky because like you, you know, I like I'm, I'm in front of a camera. I don't want to sit here. Oh well, I'm going through this because there's such a big calling on my life. And then you think, well, that pride's trying to flex it. Like, oh, well, God's going to really use you. You know what I mean? And it's just like, I don't care what God wants me to do as long as I'm in His will. If it's washing toilets at Dream Center for the rent, whatever it is, as long as I'm in His will and His perfect will, everything is cool. So you know what I mean? And I know Jesus Christ said, that "I go away and the greater miracles." you're going to do even greater miracles because I send the helper. And then I, I know I've had people pro prophesize over my life, you know what I mean? And this and that, they said that God's going to accelerate my life and that I'm going to help people with deliverance. And that's awesome. That's what I want to do. But I know that I have to develop spiritually so that I'm sound, so that I'm, you know what I mean? I'm on that firm foundation, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, then I'll just, you know, as long as I'm able to, that's why, like, I, I, I just wanted to pray because I just, like, I just want me to be out of the way. And, and I guess, like, like Lori says, some, she used to always come out of the prayer closet and she used to say, God's proud of you. You just try too hard. And, like, I don't want to, like, have a religious spirit. You know what I mean? Make it like a... It's, it, being a Christian is not easy, you know? It's like, I mean, you know, like, like, it's like, I'm not working for my salvation because my salvation is in Jesus Christ. It's a done deal. I'm just, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, you know, I was created. I'm his workmanship. It should be something, like Paul said, it should be something that I want to do because it's only because of his mercies. So I should want to present my body to him because it's his. You know what I mean? Man, he saved me. Because if he didn't save me, I wouldn't be sitting. I'm getting ready to be 58. I've OD'd a bunch of times. I've been shot at. I've been stabbed. I mean, so many, so many different things, and I'm still here. You know, what I mean, I grew up in L.A. You know, and I, sh I shouldn't be here, but I'm here because, because He wants me here. You know what I mean? Because He's not done with me. I'm His. He created me. You know. So yeah. You know. So you lived on the street at the age of 13, and how long after you? You mentioned that you don't think you fully surrendered to Christ, but how long after do you think that you've surrendered to Christ? Because if you don't fully surrender to Christ, I don't think you can sit here and really share your testimony. Yeah. Oh, I don't mean I don't mean fully s surrender. Well, I mean like I 
I mean, I, I, I believe I've surrendered, but it's just like, you know how God prunes you a little bit at a time, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, I ask him, dear, you know, God, if I have an altar, you know what I mean? Because, like, they say your, your altar, you know, like, if you have a split person, you can't bind it or nothing because it's a part of you. Well, if I have something inside of me that needs to be healed, I ask God, dear Lord, take it, introduce yourself to it, and take it and make me whole because I surrender. I want to surrender everything to you or whatever, you know what I mean? And, and, I don't know, maybe if it's just my flesh or I still have, still have strongholds to my flesh, you know, because if anyone wishes to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily. My flesh just doesn't want to get up on the cross. So sitting there trying to be a weasel like it's always been and psych me out so that I'll lash out so it'll get something, you know what I mean? It can't get high no more. It can't have sex no more. So here, well, let me just smack Lori around a couple for a couple minutes before you throw me back up on the cross. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a, isn't, and it's not funny to me at all. You know what I mean? It's, I'm not saying it to, to joke about it or whatever, but it's my reality, you know? But yeah, I, I, I love Jesus Christ with all my heart. And I, just, I want to just be able to just give him everything, just wake up and, and, and I do when I wake up, I pray. You know what I mean? I lay there and I'm praying. I'm, you know, he's first. Because it says, those who seek him early will find him, you know what I mean? And those whose mind is stayed on him will have his peace. I know the scriptures because I've read them and they're living and active, you know what I mean? And they, you know, they, they just do so much for you, you know what I mean? And, and it's just like, that's what I want. I, I just want to be that vessel, just like, whatever, just do what you want with this vessel, God, to where these arms and these, you know what I mean? The Holy Spirit is a light to my path and a light to my lamp to my feet, of, you know, 119, 105, you know what it says? And that's what I want, you know what I mean? I just want to just make sure that I'm walking in accord with His Spirit, you know? It's, and I'm sure that He he knows you. He knows you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And what's so interesting is that you, you want to live a life right now pleasing to the Lord, and that's, that's, he knows, he knows you. But I'm sure he doesn't want you to be stressed out how to, or what should, right? Yeah. Because that's like, then again, you're using your own yeah. effort. Yes. Try to figure out how to please the Lord when he loves you where you're at. Just yeah. give it to him. Yeah. Just let him take over and mm -hmm. not carry the burden yes. on your back. Yes. Right? Because now you are in Christ and you said you have brothers, one in I guess lifetime in prison, and or is he already out? In, no, my brother's out. Yeah, so I'm he's see out, tomorrow. and right. Yeah. So now the Lord just wants you just to share the love of Christ to your family, and yeah. and not to carry that burden on your back and trying to right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the Lord tells me. Yeah, right. Not to try so hard because that's what the word says. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, and learn, for I'm gentle and I'm in heart, and you strong yes for you. So, for my yoke is easy, but my load is light, you know? Amen. Yeah. And I, that's what I do. I have a tendency to, I, yeah, and I, I, yeah, it's just like, like I said, it's, you know, she's this exact, she's told me the same exact thing that you just told me, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, I just, I don't know what it is. It makes me revert, revert back to. Well, I mean, I mean, it's like I, I mean, it's like I'm I'm at her house. I don't go nowhere. You know what I mean? I'm not doing no drugs. I'm not doing nothing. But that's what I mean. I, that's why I want to go to the Dream Center. You know what I mean? Because I still feel I need development. You know what I mean? Because I've only been off the streets for I've only. Stop using heroin for seven months, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I've only been off the streets for uh, maybe a, a, well, give or take a year, you know what I mean? But I was running around out there for a long time, you know? Because you were yeah. a dope dealer, right? A drug dealer yeah, for been, how I've many been, years? Been, for a lot of years. I started, I started selling drugs as 13, 14 years old. I've been to prison nine times, you know? I've been to prison eight times for selling drugs, you know? Yeah. And each time you were in there, did you, did the Lord reveal Himself to you through no, just, dreams or visions? Did just, you no, encounter just, Him when you were in prison? No, just my fifth time. Just the fifth time I was in prison here, 
is when I walked with God, you know. I was on a level four yard Corcoran prison, you know. And yeah, he just, and it was a trip because I, just last night I was, I was remembering how when I used to be in my cell sharing with my cellmate and it was like the Holy Spirit would take over my body and my conscious mind would be right here watching myself, you know what I mean? And I could even see it in my bunkie's eyes. He'd be looking at me like, and it was a trip. The presence was so strong that he would like, can you see it? He would be telling me, can you see it? I was like, yeah, bro, because I would be like right here. And you can just, you know what I mean? You could just feel it. And then like I was telling her, I'd be on the prison yard and I'd be working out and I would get convicted and I would get off the yard and all the Christians would just flock to me. And then I would just, and I always kept the Bible open because I always wanted them to know that what I was speaking was coming from the word, you know, his word. You know, and the guys would be like, how do you get so strong? And I would just be like, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. I'm just living for Jesus, you know. And yeah, I'm going to get back there, you know what I mean? It, I'm already where he wants me to be. You know, I I know he wants me to be right where I'm at with Lori. I'm already where he wants me to be, you know what I mean? And uh, I just, there's just some things I need to figure out or whatever. Or like you said, just, I need to learn to just chill out and let go, take a chill pill, you know? Yeah. Do you think that nine times being in prison, the Lord allowed you to be there exactly nine times for the purpose, for his purposes? Well, I believe the Lord brought it to my attention because I used to be like, chastised. The Lord's never chastised me. You know what I mean? Her, her, like her relationship with God is totally different because she'd be like, well, you better get it right. I'd be like, I'm not talking to God like that, you know? <laughs> And but and I used to be like, because when we first got together, she she was like, um, I'm scared for you. You go back out to the Lord. And I used to be like, what is she talking about? You know, he loves me. You know what I mean? And then she finally was like, well, why do you think he went to prison so many times? And I realized it now it was because, you know, God was, you know, chastising me. You know what I mean? And I guess that's why I guess, I guess that's why I went to prison as many times as I did, you know. I would always, you know, get busted. Someone would always tell on me, you know. And then this last time I got out, I was on skid roads, you know, selling heroin when my fire burned down, you know. All that money, that was dope money, you know. All that stuff I had, it was dope stuff, you know, and it all burned up. And it was like, it didn't mean nothing to me, you know. I knew that, I knew that my life, well, I was just like, you know, when your life isn't about nothing, you know, I never had no, I never had no goals or nothing, you know, never, I never aspired to be anything, you know what I mean? I didn't daydream about being this or being that or nothing, never in my whole life, you know what I mean? Other than maybe when I was a child, you know what I mean, in math, I thought about being a math teacher, but that was just like... Real quick, you know what I mean? Because like I said, I hit the street at 13. But I got smarter than my math teacher when I was 16 years old, when I was busted. Because God gave me the gift of knowledge. Anything I studied, I could learn, you know. Because the more you can retain, and he gave me the gift to be able to teach, to convey it to others, you know. And it was like, you know, I've abused this brain so much with sherm and pills and cocaine and sniffing pain and acid and everything, but the devil hasn't been able to de destroy my faculties. You know, I'm able to, I still have cognitive thinking, and that's all by God's grace because he didn't let the enemy destroy this because he has a purpose for it, you know what I mean? And it's just like, it's awesome, you know what I mean? And, and like, when I ran into her, she asked me about the vaccine, and I told her Psalms 91. It's a trip to, like, Knowing that you're running, the, you're running the streets and you're living a life contrary to God, but you still know God and you still know He's got your back. And I can't explain it, but I always knew that God was there for me. You know, I always knew that He had my back because I've been through so many different scrim scrimmages. You know, running the streets and being in prison, and it was just like, man, it, it just, I just knew that someone was watching my back, and it was God. You know, yeah. So how is your relationship with your father now? Oh, me and my father, we haven't talked since the 90s. But I lived with him in the 90s, you know, after I got out of prison here. And 
You know, my dad wasn't like, I mean, I don't know. I didn't, ha I didn't, I never had grandpas. So see, I don't know what my dad went through or where he came from. I just knew my dad and his mom and my black grandma was a Christian. She was a godly woman straight up. You know what I mean? Just all about God, nice. Never seen her cuss or anything. I've never seen my dad cuss or my mom, you know? But like I said, my dad was abusive. But I lived with my dad in the 90s, and we were cool. You know, we smoked weed, and we just kicked it, you know what I mean? He, he, he was just like still my dad, you know what I mean? But I used to steal from him, you know what I mean? And, and uh, so it's easy for my dad to just be like, man, I'm cool, you know what I mean? Because it's just like he wasn't really like. I didn't get a lot, like a lot of love from my dad, you know what I mean? Like, you know how you kid, you get cuffed up and sit there and you just know your dad's there for you or whatever. You know what I mean? Because like, like I said, he went and worked and he provided and my dad was just, he was there, but he wasn't there. You know what I mean? You know, he's 79, he still works today. You know what I mean? He's worked on the Long Beach docks in 74, you know what I mean? And uh, that's where my little brother's at in Carson, you know? And just like I talked to my little brother this morning, I didn't say nothing about my dad because I don't want... He's there with my dad, and I know how my, he knows how my dad is, and I know, so it's just like, because I told my little brother, I've just given all my family relationships to God. Those that God wants to bring back into my, because he wants me to talk to them, or whatever, you know what I mean? And it's just like, but I don't like go to God and ask him to restore those relationships, because he's not the one that took them. The devil is, you know what I mean? So I've already told the devil, give me back everything that you stole from me, you know what I mean? And then I've just prayed to God, whatever relationships you want me to have, you bring them back to use them because other than that, he can use somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because everybody out there in the whole world is my family mm -hmm. and God. So whoever God wants me to talk to, that's who I want to talk to, you know what I mean? Because he says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So that's what I want to do in my life, just glorify God, you know? And that's why I want to go to the Dream Center because, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's there's a lot of people there, and there's a lot of young men that go through there. You know what I mean? And a lot of people go through there, and they get you know, it's one thing to go through a discipleship, and it's another thing not to really know what you're fighting against. You know? And I'm gonna go there. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna discipline myself. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna just ask God to to move me, to use me. You know what I mean? To help other people, you know, and I, and like, you know, he's told Lori that that's where he wants me to be. He That's where he wants us to be. And, you know, when I, when me and her first got back together, I'd be like, I'd talk about a job and she'd be like, a job? What's a job? Ministry says, you know, who, who, girl, whoever meets a girl and says you want to get a shot, a job. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know. But I've always been used to making my money, you know what I mean? Having my own money, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's, it's a trip, you're like, because like the last couple months, she's just provided for me. But it's, but I know that it's really God using her to provide for me, you know what I mean? And it, it just amazes me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, what the Lord is, so what hath the Lord been revealing to you this past 2022, this year alone, that you continue need to? Rely on him because <laughs> you being you were you know oh, you grew yeah. up at such an early age you had to grow up so young at the age of thirteen and be independent and make your own money for so long so you you said you didn't need anyone to take care of you yeah but now God put you in this position to let you know yeah that you need to depend on him yeah 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 and uh yeah that's what Lori always that's what Lori tells me and it's like. Yeah, and that's what I know, you know what I mean? That, yeah, you just have to let go and let God, you know? And, and you know, we listen to sermons. Me, at her house, it's 24-7 Jesus. Lori doesn't talk about nothing else. Lori doesn't watch nothing else on TV. It's worship. It's Priscilla, Joyce Myers, or whoever. It's all about Jesus. And before, when we first got together, I used to be like, man, don't you talk about anything else? You know what I mean? And it was a trip because when I was a set free and I used to shower and I used to think about that, I used to be like, well, what else do you want her to talk about? You know what I mean? It's, it, and, you know, and, I, and my buddies over there, you know, and, and it's, it's, 
it's like amazing to to have a woman like that. You know what I mean? Because it's like, what else do you? Want? You know what I mean? How? But it like, yeah. Until you get it, it'll like, man, it just it'll it'll rub everything off of you that don't need to be on you. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's what God is doing with her. You know, yeah, it's pretty awesome. When you look back, the old Barney Jr. or Barney Heinz Jr. versus the new born again followers of Christ, what do you thank him for? Man, I thank him for loving me because, you know, when I walked away, you know, you know, Hebrews 13, 5, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It's so true, you know. His love is long-suffering, you know. You know, when I went to Skid Row, he went there with me. You know what I mean? When I was shot that heroin and OD, he was right there, you know. I've had people save my life and tell me a few days later that you were over in the corner and OD'd and I banged you with, you know what I mean? And it was God. It was God utilizing them to save me, you know. Or when I wake up in the middle of the street at 3 o'clock in the morning because I've OD'd on fentanyl and heroin, you know, and I'm right in the path of the bus lane, you know. And it was like, it was just wasn't my time, you know. Or like, or so many times that I blacked out this last year, but I always ended up somewhere to where I could go through my little blackout and nobody could harm me or nobody would bother me. I mean, I've been, I've been in such dangerous places in my life, but nobody was able to really physically harm me because God was watching over me, you know. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like 58 years old getting this Christmas, and I don't, I've never had no bones broken other than my nose from all the fights I had. But no bones broken, you know what I mean? I have my I have my health, you know what I mean? And it's just like it's all because of God, you know. And yeah, he just he's just he's never stopped loving me and he and he never will, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, I have my salvation in Jesus Christ. You know, it says in Galatians 3 3, I'm hidden in heaven with Christ. I'm already there. My spirit body is already there. It's just my flesh is still here to be utilized for them for that for that work that he's got for me to do. You cannot do that work and still go to heaven, you know what I mean, and miss your rewards and this and that. But it's like, man, that is that what you want to do? You know what I mean? And it's like, it's like, you know, and then like Paul, you know, I know Paul says make your salvation sure, but he also says, I'm convincing you neither death nor life nor angel nor principal, you know what I mean? That can separate you from the love of God, you know what I mean? And I know God loves me, you know what I mean? So I just want to love him back, you know what I mean? And and love his people back, you know what I mean? Without, without, without any hindrance on my part, you know what I mean? Ooh, I don't want to love that one. He smells, you know what I mean? That dude, you know what I mean? You know, like this one right here, she'll go out and want to touch everybody on Skid Row, but but with me around, she's more apprehensive because of the way I am. You know what I mean? And it's like, but I want to get to where we're walking side by side, and we're going out there no matter who it is, no matter what they have on them, if God wants us to reach to them. You know what I mean? Just to to pour to pour His love out onto them. You know what I mean? Whoever it is, you know. Like, do it, do it like he does it, you know? Yeah, unconditionally, you know, without partiality, you know? Because it's easy, it's easy to love the lovable, mm. but how about the unlovable, mm. you know? Yeah. Why do you think that Jesus' two greatest commandments is so important? Have you meditate on those two and, and ask him why? Um, because... Because apart from that, because, you know, you, well, because he who does not love does not know God, for God is love, you know. And apart from that, without love is just, without love is just not Christ, you know. I've, no, I've, I've never really meditated on those, you know what I mean, but... 
Because he said the first and greatest commandment is what? To love God with mm -hmm. all of your heart, your and soul, your mind, your strength. Fellow man, as you love and the yourself. second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. And well, like I said, you know, like I said, I love God and I, I love my fellow man, but I can only love him as much as I love myself. And I think I'm still healing, you know, and, and, um, yeah, I, I believe when I go to the dream center and just, I plan on going there and just fasting more prayer and fasting more, you know what I mean? Because I, I do things with Lori, you know what I mean? And she's, she's like right there and she's all for me, but I think it was, I don't know if it was today or yesterday. God's cool with all that and he's brought her into my life, but he wants to know if you can stand alone, but you're not actually alone, you're, you're with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it was today when I talked about how an eagle, an eagle soars alone. Mm -hmm. You never really see an eagle in a pack. Mm -hmm. And he says, can you soar like that with me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the place I got to get to, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is your... Um your ultimate goal and message that you want to share with those that are watching your testimony today? Well, um, to let go and let God, you know, and failure doesn't define you. You know, God's already, um, God's already established your destiny, you know, just, let go and let him guide you into your destiny, you know, and you won't be disappointed. You know, he loves you unconditionally and your flesh isn't going to want to surrender, but it does get easier. Satan cannot stand you because you represent his, you, those that are in Christ Jesus remind them of his defeat on Calvary. Your enemy is real, you know, and you, you have to fight for yourself, you know. Paul says, for the weapons are, for, Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know what I mean? What do you think he's talking about? He's not talking about your fellow man. He's not talking about someone you can see, you know, and, it, and the, it's, it's so real, you know, and like you were talking about, there's, generational curses, you know, um, your DNA, you know what I mean? And the devil hasn't forgot about, you know, the sins being handed down from the third, fourth, fifth generation, you know what I mean? He's well aware of his legal rights and he sends his demons to look down that line, what, what doors open, this or that. You gotta guard your spiritual eyes, your spiritual ears, you know what I mean? What you watch, what you, mm -hmm. you are what you watch. Mm -hmm. Don't get, you know what I mean? Don't think, well, I'm a Christian on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday, but on Thursday and Friday, I'm going to watch Netflix and watch people do drugs. You know what I mean? You, you got to be real about it because the devil is just waiting, waiting for you to slip up, you know what I mean? And then he can touch you up, you know? So my message is to everyone that's listening is that, like I said, to let go and let God and fight for your freedom because Jesus Christ died for your freedom. You don't fight for victory. You, you fight from a place of victory when you're in Jesus Christ.